Okay, so I'm doing a bit of a, a radio repair blitz at the moment. These are all machines which I bought from boot sales recently. Um, so this one wasn't working at all. And so I've got this one working. This is a, um, um, a Japanese made Ferguson Brandon machine. Um, it, you know, the, the display window was all messed up, so I've had to take that out. Um, and it also had a, a bit of uh, damage, um, physical damage to the circuit board, so it was a quite an easy one to repair, really. Um, and it's one of these where it looks quite good. It's out of its leather ready case, like that. Um, really, it's a nice little radio. EM FM, um, EM FM, EM medium wave, long wave, as these all are. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a very early Japanese machine. Um, so, so that's working great. So I've got that one working great. So I'm happy with that. Uh, another one I bought is this one here. Uh, this uh, region tone, which annoyingly is actually works straight out of the box. Um, uh, but it does need the battery connectors sorting out so I can run it off PP3 batteries. Uh, another one, um, which I'm going to look at later, is this... Um, old valve radio, in this case a, a Marconi unit, um, which from a little bit of research I've done looks like it was actually manufactured by um, his master's voice company. Uh, and this one's probably going to be the most interesting to see if I can get it working because it is a valve radio set. If I go in here, yeah, uh, so there's, there's, the four, there's four valves in here. Um, this here is loose, and not attached to anything, which I think it should be. So that's that, that really the first one of the first things to try and sort out. Um, but this, like all portable valve um, radios, runs on weird voltages. Um, this particular one runs on 69 volts and one and a half. Um, obviously, the battery packs long, long time out of production. So anyway, that's, so that's, that's another one. But the one that this video is about is this Roberts radio. Um, this is a, an R200, um, which would have been made sometime in the early 1960s. Uh, and I got it and it wasn't working, which is fair enough. Um, but I found that when I was tapping TR1, which is that one there, though originally it was mounted on the other side where it should be. Uh, when I was tapping that, um, it was making a crackly noise. So I thought, is this the germanium whisker issue? Um, so I went on the old internet and um, found a technique which sometimes can repair the uh, issue, if not temporarily, and it didn't work. And it looks like I've actually fried that device. Now, these genuine... Um, Devices are selling at the moment for about fifteen pounds, um, you know, which for a hobby is still cheap. But when you've only paid a couple of pounds for the whole radio, it does seem a bit um, extravagant to then try and repair it with um, fifteen pounds worth of parts. Um, but I found out also on the internet that there is a silicon alternative, which has just arrived today. Says confidently, and oh, there it is. Um, which are these silicon devices, which apparently nine times out of ten are a straight swap. So I'm going to give that a go. And I have indeed mounted the transistor, that one there, into those locations. Now it is on the wrong side of the circuit board, but that's. Um, it, it shouldn't be an issue anyway, but it, it's it's easier for me to do this one, especially when I'm just um, experimenting at the moment. So I've got to power it up now and see what happens. Okay, so one of the jobs I have to do is um, get the right battery connector to go in here for a PP3, but here we go. I can push that down on the... Oh! Something's happening. Um, but I just need to tune it. Uh, this is going to be awkward. Um, right, hang on. Right, okay, so I don't actually know whether this is in long wave or short uh, or medium wave at the moment. 
So let's go again. See if I can tune it. Hang on. There's a very strong whistle going on. Nothing wrong there. Well, it's working more than it was. Um, but I'm not getting any tuning coming through. So does that mean I've now got another transistor down? Uh, if I do, it's most likely the one that runs the oscillator. Uh, so which one runs the oscillator? Okay, so that there is TR2. So that could be the oscillator. So... I don't think that should do that. I think I'll replace that. Okay, so I've just replaced the second PF117 with another one of these um, what's going to happen now And there we go, success, she's working. So I had two Duff AF117s and these silicon equivalents do indeed appear to be just a straight swap. Um, I mean, I still need to, uh, you know, ch check its calibration and what have you, um, see if I can get any better, but so far so good. Right, I'm going to put that together now. Right, I need the front panel. I mean, this thing was in a hell of a state when I got it. It was very, very, very mucky. I mean, it's still not brilliant, but it's a lot plainer than it was when I first got my eyes on it. It does fit in a rather strange way, this radio, in that it snaps in like that okay and then it's held in with these little wedges um, one goes in there like That's those wedges in place. So here we go, do it again. Uh, right, put a proper battery connector on and then I can begin to service it but and get it working. But it's it is it is basically working. It's operational. Just need to get it just need to get it right. I'm gonna have to fix this strap as well obviously. Um, it's in a bit of a bad way. Um, it's going to have to be replaced, isn't it? Looks relatively simple to replace.
just got to get some leather the right sort of size. Uh, got the famous um, Roberts revolving base. Um, so you can so you can sort of point, it, point it with the right transmitters quite easily. Um, that's good to go. Right, so now that's good to go, um, or at least for me to start on. Um, I can now think about finishing this and starting on the Marconi. Uh, right, so that's that.